Hello there, everybody. This is Alex from Hardcoin Guides, bringing you my guide for Luigi's Mansion A Rank Run on Hidden Mansion difficulty. Today we're doing Area 1, which is going to be probably the shortest area out of the four that I can think of. I will also separate Area 4 Blackout with Area 4, so that will be two separate videos for those that are wondering, because I just wanted to be easier for Area 4. So... I should try to explain just a few things before we get way too into this. I'm not going for all gold portraits. I was at first, but then that changed when Bulasis happened. So this is not a complete like gold portrait run. I might miss a few mice and some blue ghosts here. So just remember that this is just going for A rank, which I think is 100 million or 110 million, somewhere around there, uh, requirement. So. And I, I do get it, for sure, there's no doubt. So I'm basically just going to show you, like, all the blue ghosts that I could find, and all the mice I could find, and all the treasure I can find. So that way I can hopefully help you guys get it. And I'm playing on Hidden Mansion because it makes it harder for some aspects and easier in some. So for Hidden Mansion, the benefits that you get is you get a 1.5 times stronger... Poltergeist, meaning that you can catch ghosts, you know, regular ghosts and boss ghosts or area ghosts, whatever you want to call it, even quicker than you could before. And ghosts, you know, just any enemy ghost or anything like that, will actually do twice as much damage to you than a normal playthrough. So there is kind of that balancing act going on there. And one little trick that I learned, actually there's a few tricks, there's a lot of tricks that I learned after my first initial recording happened with this video. So, with this guide, I should say. And once we get to boss ghosts, then I will start to do them there. And I do apologize for sounding so everywhere right now, but I, I'm, I'm super excited to be doing this. And the other problem is too, like I have so much to talk about in so little time. So hopefully I can cover up everything I possibly can. So for the first, couple rooms it's relatively easy to get through the first room especially it's really simple also since you're playing hidden mansion i do assume that most likely you are probably familiar enough with the game that you can at least kind of handle your own when it comes to fighting ghosts and in some situations i'll try to hopefully help you with that you know visually and hopefully my commentary can help as well because there are some rooms that are i i would say worse than others when it comes to having to deal with ghosts in that specific room and one specific one I can think of is definitely the hidden room where you spawn in and there's ghost bats straight up there so first speedy spirit happens to be inside of this cupboard right here or this little closet right there so he's a relatively easy grab for those that don't know exactly how to catch a speedy spirit or you know what what the timing is for catching it what I do is, as soon as I know the location of Speedy Spirit, I go to it, I press A to hit it instead of using the vacuum. I think using the vacuum is a worse idea, because when you use a vacuum to open up the area that the blue ghost is hiding in, then you'll essentially whip out your flashlight again and get the stun, and it might just screw everything up. So, what I do, I walk up to the area that I know he's at, I press A, and then I don't even mess with the flashlight. I leave the flashlight on, and for like a split second... You know, when his when his health bar comes up, bam, just hit R and just start holding back. That's it. There are going to be some trickier speedy spirits later on, so I'll get to those when we get to those. Also, if you do know the location of the speedy spirit, and you'll see me do it in this guide as well, I do recommend saving if you know where one is, you know, before you go get it, or if you already got one and you would rather just make sure that it's safe and sound. Same thing with a mouse. So, like, if you get a mouse that randomly spawns, which mice in specific areas have a 20% chance to spawn so the ones without the cheese I should clarify on that a little bit more and again once we get to those specific rooms then I'll explain a little bit more in detail because this is going to be a very quick and very speedy guide if I miss something or if I confuse you just ask questions in the comments below if you have any comment or any questions about anything I'm doing if you're wondering exactly why I'm doing hidden mansion run and just why does it matter? Why does anybody need a guide for it? Well, some people don't know where everything's at. I mean, granted, you could look up location videos on YouTube. You know, you could easily do, like I did, you know, for some of them, because 
there's a few I didn't even know about. <laughs> and some of them are, you know, off my head that I do remember catching before in previous runs. So, yeah, there there is that. But, you know, some people, maybe they want to watch my my take on it, you know? or just It's just a fun run. That's really all it is. So for those that are wondering why a guide specifically, then just don't take it as a guide. Just take it as a, a simple run. That, that's that's really about it. Just an A-rank run on Hidden Mansion. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm going right back downstairs. I'm going to save the game because I just got a blue ghost, or speedy spirit, I should call him that. And I'm going back into Neville's room, which he spawns a mouse and a blue ghost. There are 10 gold mice throughout the entirety of the game. And there are 15 speedy spears. So far, we have one. And right now, we're heading off to get number two of 15 and number one of 10 mice. Also, this was kind of a mess up right here. Uh, it's nothing too bad. Uh, if you come over here and you aim your your vacuum, the poltergust, up and you, you know, aim it toward the bookshelf, there is a book that will try to start flying toward you. And I recommend grabbing that before you grab the Speedy Spirit, just in case. Because if you lose the Speedy Spirit, you're going to have to restart your save. Or, you know, like if you really wanted it. You could lose out on a few Speedy Spirits and a few mice. But I highly recommend that you try to get as many as you possibly can to get the A rank. And then, of course, we got the Gold Mouse, so that's not bad. Also, I did kind of mess up there, and I'm sure you guys probably saw that. So, this kind of led me to the idea... Uh, either is Neville... Or it was a ghost later that led me to the idea that when it comes to getting gold portraits, all you need to do is chip off 90 of their health in one go. So I'll, I'll explain that maybe at the end of the video exactly what I'm talking about. So for the first thing I should explain since we got another ghost coming up, we got the wife coming up, which I'll pretty much just do the same thing to her. The trick with catching regular ghosts you know, like the human ghosts and what have you. Well, some of them are not human. But, okay, Neville, for example, and ghosts like him. The trick with them, whenever you start dropping them down 10 health, like every 10 health, let go of the control stick, and I'm talking about the analog stick that you use to move Luigi, let go of it and hit back. Every, every 10 health, just keep hitting back. Basically, just keep pulling them back, and that should... Hopefully, most likely, ensure that you will get the catch. And of course, if you ever can, this is a good idea too. If you can ever find a corner, then definitely take advantage of it. Try to pull them toward a corner. That's always a, a decent idea. There are specific locations that I, I assume that work better for a specific ghost. So, if you can figure those out, then congratulations. You did it. You did it better than I could. But for this run, up until Bulasis, I will probably more likely get gold. I'm going for gold portraits. I almost had it with Bulasis, but uh, he kind of screwed me over, so that happens. And next up, we have the first area boss, which is going to be Chauncey. I don't remember the wife's name, though. Olivia? I think it was. Either way, we're going straight into Chauncey's room, and what you're going to see me do here is a s sort of like speedrun trick, and you're going to see me do a lot of speedrunning tricks. And the reason for that being is because after I beat the game, I was like, you know, I want to see a speedrun of this game. And so I watched some speedrun videos and I found some interesting things that I didn't even know about that you could technically do. And hopefully I'll get to explain some of them here. And one of the speedrun tricks actually is taking that ball, putting it down in front of the rocking horse, rocking the horse, grab the ball, and then shoot Chauncey with it. And of course, I, I do mess up, so that happens. Also, whenever you're fighting ghosts, you know, just basic, like, ghosts like this. And if they have any of these objects that are flying around the room, make sure you grab those first and then grab the ghost. That way you can kind of save yourself the trouble. Also, a quick tip. When it comes to regular ghosts, um, when you get the giant big pearl, that's when you know for sure that you got a gold portrait. And the... I, I kind of slightly mentioned it, but the recommendation, or... Not recommendation... The recommended amount of health to take off to get a gold portrait for them is 90 or so. 90 or 91. You gotta knock them down to like at least 9 to 10 health. And if they break off around that, you're good. You got a gold portrait. But before that, well, then you got a silver. Or a bronze. Whatever, you, however bad it takes. 
So, this is Chauncey. He's the first area boss. He's one of the easiest of four bosses uh, in this game, I would say. I think there's at least four that I can think of. Well, anyway, all he's got, he's got a very basic pattern. You know, he's just sending out rocking chairs. You just run through him, avoid him like that, and then you grab these balls. And I think it's the third ball that actually drops on the ground and rolls. So what I'm going to do here is I'm doing what I do with every other basic ghost. Not enemy ghost, but just, you know, basic ghost ghost. And that is, you know, doing the whole pullback technique. Like every 10, I let go of the control stick and pull back instantly. You got to do it like really, really fast. So every 10 health, just keep pulling it back. And also, what I did was I let go when he was around the 50 range. And that is because if you hold on for too long, he'll just knock you straight off. Also, when it comes to area boss ghosts, they have a different a different situation for getting gold portraits and that being I'm trying to think of the word for that what is it damn it anyway the uh, the specifics for getting a gold portrait for area ghosts is you have to have at least I think it's like 90 or, or more health you know at the end of the fight you well you can't just reclaim it if you take more than I think 10 damage in that fight then you basically lose out on your gold portrait. So that's another thing too. The area ghosts and the main ghost are completely different from one another. So just bear in mind that that will happen. That's the requirements. That's the word I'm looking for. The requirements for getting gold portraits. Okay, so now I have some room to talk. I'm going to try to clarify a few things one more time. That way we can all get an idea of exactly what the hell I said throughout this entire video. So, first things first, uh, tips for catching regular ghosts. Again, when you're sucking them up. When I say regular ghost, I'm talking about ghosts. Like, you know, the the mansion, you know, people that lived in the mansion, pretty much. The mansion dwellers, whatever the hell you want to call it. So, essentially with them, you have to grab onto them. You know, you put, try to bring them toward a corner or something. A specific part of the room that doesn't have any obstacles or objects in the way because you might accidentally let go and You what you want to do is while you're sucking them up, you know, you just You have your controller. Okay. I'm trying to think of a diagram here You got your controller in your hand and then you're holding down on the control stick and sometimes a lot of the time What I do is I use the C stick as well. I don't know if that works I don't know if it helps you guys uh, if you want to try it out try it out but every time that I pull down on the control stick, I'll also pull down on the C stick as well. So basically what you're doing is, you know, while you're sucking them up and they drop down 10 health, you pull back again, pull back again, pull back again. So like just keep, you know, pulling up, pull back, pull up, pull back. It, it's easier when you start doing it. And when you start getting that rhythm of knowing how to do it, you're pretty much fine. And again, when it comes to big area boss ghosts, they require you to at least take less than 10 damage throughout the entirety of the fight to get the gold portrait and if you chip off 90 or more health in one go for a regular ghost then you will get the gold portrait there too and again there are 10 mice and there are 15 speedy spirits and off the top of my head I'm trying to remember exactly where every speedy spirit is but of course throughout the entirety of this I will show you and for those that are wondering there are three specific speedy spirits that only spawn during the blackout and that will be there's one in the piano room or melody's room uh, right on the piano chair if you click that then he spawns there's one in the hidden room there's a giant chest on the far right you walk up to that grab it there you go and there's one in chauncey's room on the crib so when you click on that with a he will pop up and that's the three in the blackout and i will get those and that will be in a separate video so this will be a five part guide for hidden mansions a rank run and again, I'm not getting all gold portraits. I was going for it, but again, Bulasa screwed me over. So I said, screw it. I'll just do a normal A rank run. So again, I think the requirements for A rank is at least 100 or 110 million, something like that. And I think the American version is different as well than other versions because I think it was Europe or Japan. I don't I don't remember. I remember hearing about like a different version of this game having a different requirement for A rank and I think it's like 150 million which is just ridiculous because I got like 126. And by the way you'll probably notice that I had like four different uh, 
well, I had a number four on my save file, and the reason being is because this is technically my fifth or so playthrough. And real quick, I'll explain why. I'm playing a file two, which is a file that I used for my brother's playthrough on my main channel that he did recently. He got A rank, did all that. So that was the first playthrough, just normal playthrough. Also, to unlock Hidden Mansion, you have to be the game once. So there's that. And then I w went to play Hidden Mansion for the first time. So this is my f first actual playthrough. And I recorded it. It messed up completely. Just said screw it, throw it away. Did another recording. Worked just fine. Everything worked out pretty well. Got through it, beat the game. Did my own normal playthrough, just, just for fun, just to see if I can beat my score. Did that. And then I learned a few tricks on how to do this game better, and then from there, I did my fourth, fourth or fifth, I think it's my fourth playthrough on Hidden Mansion, so i am playing this game like all week, to basically trying to perfect the craft and, you know, help you guys figure out what to do, so anyway, that is the end of this episode, I'll see you guys in area two, so as always, take care, everybody.